Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Chanel Investor and you can also find my blogs on ospreystrategic.org as well as stockcharts.com. So today I want to cover off the energy crisis. What is the energy crisis? The energy crisis is this move to everything electric. And the problem is we're not expanding the main grid uh, very much. We're adding solar and wind in some places, but we're shutting down nuclear and others and coal. And I, I understand the, the requirement to change. What I don't understand is uh, moving everybody into the electric cars without upgrading the grid. And, you know, there's a couple of states tonight that are saying, please turn off your um, lights and lower your, your uh, energy draw because we don't have enough power on the grid. And, you know, we're early days in this. So um, the gentleman from the New Jersey Power Company, and I didn't catch the name, but he was on CNBC when I was out for my uh, exercise today listening in. And, you know, he, he talked about their primary mission is trying to get the grid volume upgraded, and then they work with the regional suppliers to try and get the last mile upgraded. And I'll give you a good example. So I have a cabin in the mountains that has um, only electric. There's no natural gas or propane. I could have a propane tank if I wanted, but there's no natural gas in the valley. So all of the power consumption or um, energy supply is, is through the electric grid. And I have a 200 amp breaker in the house. So it's a, it's a cabin, so we don't use it very often, but the hot water tank is 45 years old. So I wanted to change it out. And so I've asked for uh, this water uh, tank to be changed. And so I inquired about hot water on demand. And in order to have an electric hot water on demand that would do two or three showers at a time, um, it was a 160 amp draw. Well, I only have 200 amps on the whole breaker, so I couldn't run the dryer or the stove while I was um, trying to heat the water. So it, it's really an interesting um, event to try and see how everything lines up so neatly. And so if I went with that electric hot water tank, I would have to upgrade my um, connection to the main grid and go from a 200 amp breaker to a, to a 400 amp breaker. So all of this just keeps adding on. And my question is, if we're not going to upgrade the power supply, how does, how does this work out? So anyway, we're going to cover off those stocks today. So I also want to cover off the backdrop at mid-year. Um, the market's been on quite a tear and we just had options expiration in the last Fed meeting. They're now paused. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole Fed pausing cycle, recession outlook, all that kind of stuff. Just want to talk about some of the sector rotation that's going on. And then the life without Fed help. Um, I was at a financial presentation and it was, uh, you know, an asset manager and they manage uh, a significant amount of money, $400 billion. And they were talking that, you know, how, how how they see things going. And the interesting part for them was they feel that the market's really in trouble here because there's no Fed support. And this is one of the few times. So all of the fundamental um, work they do is backdropped by the fact that there's no Fed and uh, coming in to help here. And so we one of the things we talked about was the the rise and the fall of the interest rate or the inflation rate. And the real question is, you know, in, in 2020, we were early 2020, we were, the Fed was worried about having uh, deflation and the whole world was getting slower and slower. And that was a problem. And so then COVID came along and we don't have to get into conspiracy theories or whatever, but what happened is was on the fiscal and monetary side, um, we got a whole bunch of stimulus worldwide and we shocked the world into an inflation cycle. So that's worked out. So now we've come back down and we're, let's call it 4%, and we're working our way into that band of 1% to 3%. 
And the belief is we're going to touch down like a Cessna 182 and keep the whole economy going? Or are we going to, you know, is it going to be more difficult like a NASA um, going to the moonshot and then we have to drop in the ocean, bob around for a little bit and try to try to get our bearings and have somebody come and rescue us? So lots of questions there about um I thought it was interesting that the fundamental version was looking for this help from the Fed um, while the interest rate is dropping or the inflation rate is dropping, interest rate is flat. So anyway, that is an interesting situation. And here we've had a market on fire and the sector rotation seems to confirm that we're in a big new bull market thrust. So that's pretty interesting. And the last thing, again, this energy crisis, what I have is a list of charts that's all put together. Um, so there's copper in there and lithium in there, and there's a bunch of uh, companies that supply charging stations, and there's other companies that are more focused on, um, you know, electricity on the grid and that kind of stuff. So solar, wind, all that. So so it's everything except the fossil fuel industry. And... Hopefully, um, I'll show you some ideas about how to build that list, how to manipulate that list, and let's go in and look and see what's going on there. If you like the work we do at Osprey Strategic, uh, feel free to head over to our website, ospreystrategic.org, and you can take a one-month trial offer for just $7. Again, go to ospreystrategic.org if that interests you, and let's check out the charts. So I want to start with the... Uh, S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. And again, everything's still holding here on the 60 minute chart. We're sitting right around the 34 EMA. What does that work out to? Roughly a five day moving average. And, um, and so what we want to see here, obviously, is that the market continues to go higher. We were significantly overbought. So we do need to be aware that this last move here, especially for the S&P, has been a bit parabolic. We saw that in March into April and then ground sideways for a while. So far, um, nothing really to worry about. I would just say that the PPO is up near the high level, and it wouldn't be a surprise to see us ro rotate down here, even if we got back to the 20-day or the 50-day moving average. Um, you know, Those are still big uptrends that we would be a part of. Anyway, so if that's what we're in for, just be a little bit careful on your portfolio size and try to make sure that you're aware of the changes going on. Um, the big companies, so Apple and the group, and it's important to remember just how much fuel they're adding. Um, not alone, the market has broadened out significantly, but the fuel that they're adding is pretty heady. And one of the charts I put together for my... Uh, newsletter was that the Toronto Stock Exchange is up 3% this year and it's running almost 25% behind the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ is up um, almost 30% from January and here we are, um, you know, 3%. So quite different and the real major reason for that is a difference in, in tech stocks. So here's Apple and what I want to show you is it's trying to break through this prior high at 181. It's right at around 185, and it's just important to watch. It might even just come down and bounce here and then take back off. But the PPO was up at a very, very high level where it was at in December 2022. Um, this level's a little bit higher than the 5% line here, so probably, let's call it 7%. Um, we're sitting at around 55 now. So... Um, pretty heady levels. Um, Adobe was, has been trying to break out of this base and it did so, took a big jump up and is just pulling back gently. Again, another place to look for this would be right around that 440, 450 level uh, for a touch and go, uh, taking off to the upside. The chart still looks good to me. So any little pullback might, might help, but it was up as high as 518. And then Amazon, um, been sideways here for four weeks after breaking through the horizontal support and resistance layer and this uh, downtrend line. I will say I could have put the support and resistance line up a little higher here, some res support um, when it was in the uptrend at around 135, resistance at around 130, and then we kind of wobbled around in here. And now all of a sudden we're back to that level trying to get through 130. 
So anyway, you look at it, it's still just going sideways for three or four weeks here. Um, and I mentioned that a few weeks ago. Advanced micro devices, same thing, kind of up against a resistance layer. Uh, Meta is just getting to this resistance layer and it's been an unbelievable run, 120 to almost 300. So I've got that line sitting at 300, here's 299.50 over here. So all of these charts are getting to a place where it's not uncommon for them to take a breather and at least just go sideways. And that's what we've seen with Alphabet sideways for about six weeks now. Microsoft uh, sideways for five weeks here um, at the prior high. So again, PPO way, way up there at 7.5%. And if I just click on this and um, wind out the tape for a few years, let's go 35 or something big. Um, what you can see is this 7.5% level is is reached often, but um, we're at a pretty heady version of it. Back in the late 90s or all of the 90s, it was regularly a, a performer higher than that. But let's just take the PPO and our current level is 7.448. and just draw a line on here and as you can see again we're kind of at that level um, you know we got there once in 2009 and in the thrusts in 2020 we got there um, but this is you know 11 year high or something like that pretty pretty major and then uh, again all the way back to the heady days of DOS and and um, uh, Microsoft's early version of uh, the operating system. So since the year 2000, we've only been up at this level three times. I think that would suggest we're a little bit overdone. Um, but anyway, just to keep this in the back of your mind, I'm not trying to predict failure here. I'm just saying we're definitely at a place where it's a little bit um, larger than life. And then uh, for NVIDIA, again, this chart just keeps going here, uh, pushed up again, uh, up 2.6% to start the week, up at 438. The prior high was 346. So uh, it's been a big, huge move. And the real question is how much more is in the tank? Um, again, we're up at 20% on that, um, that PPO level. And again, if we were just to go and put a, a horizontal line on that at a few years let's go down to 25 and what we're going to get here is you know the PPO didn't get up here in 2017 even during that huge run um, came up short of this level and in 2020, didn't get up here, got up here once in 2011, and that pretty much marked a major peak in the chart. And then really when it uh, first came out back in the year 2000, it was part of this heady move. So, it, you know, adding to something that's up here at the highest PPO level in, you know, 30 years or 25 years, um, probably makes it hard to add new investments and so my the big thing i would just say is at this point you know when we're looking at these charts we we've got to be a little bit more suspicious that that they might need to pull back more okay and then um let's just make sure yeah nvidia and then we go to tesla and Tesla's PPO is getting up there um it it got as high as you know 12 or something back in november and the chart sitting at, um, you know, the PPO is at around 6% right now. So still a very rapid advance. And I would just say, um, at least, you know, the chart still looks good, still climbing, but it's, it's in a much more um, neutral position than something like an NVIDIA or a Microsoft. Anyway, so that kind of gives you the backdrop of the big picture. What I do now what I would like to go to, so I have this um, chart list that I mentioned, and so I, I haven't done any massaging of it. And what I thought we'd do is just, I'll show you how to do that massaging. So we want to get rid of all these numbers at the front, and we're just going to um, select all the charts, remove the numbers, 
and get rid of them. And now we need a method to sort. And one of the problems is um, charts like copper and this industrial metals index, they're not going to have a scooter ranking. So we can't use the scooter ranking to sort. So what could we do? Well, we could um, sort by RSI. So we could add a, a different column here and we could just pick whatever RSI 14 or we, you know, something like that to try and give us a sort order. But the idea of what we're trying to do here is just get these um, get these charts so that we can see what is working. And if we've sorted them on the RSI, we can get those charts first and foremost. They're the highest. And then we can work our way down. Now, RSI is just kind of the short-term picture. You can see in the scooter ranking here, it's still going to you know have charts all over the place. And so I think it, um, you know, it helps us to look at this, or we could just use the scooter ranking and put everything that doesn't have a scooter ranking together at the bottom. Either way, still going to help us work with that. And I think if we just, um, you know, grab this data and, and try and look at it, we, we get our choice of which way we want to do it. Normally, I'd sort by the scooter ranking, so now I'm going to sort, sort by RSI, and then we just scroll to the very bottom of the page hit number in sorted order and that's going to add the numbers for us and now we just want to go back and look at it in chart list view and that just allows us to scroll through the charts so here we have celestica and it's breaking out to the upside chart looks really really strong up four percent on uh, monday tuesday and then pioneer power uh, canada was open on monday uh, pioneer power solutions this chart starting to move up what I think is is important, see how for a long period the scooter ranking was awful, and then now it started to really run. We're, we're getting to the, pay, to the place that all of these charts are turning on, and in the Osprey opportunities that we operate on our website, we have a whole area for technology, but what we've done is we've taken semiconductors and software and given them their own separate list and then we're looking at the technology stocks that are in um, that might be involved in other things and and one of the areas that's really strong here is electrical components um, we're seeing some pretty interesting chart patterns on some of those um, names if you wanted to go look for some of that um, and here's Seaback Energy Technology. Now this chart really, let's call it resistance at around 150. It's hovering in there, but you know, you got a nice wide base here. If this could turn and get going like it, it did back in 2020, um, you know, nice move up, but you kind of want to watch it get going. And you can see that the scooter ranking has finally moved up into the top area. So the chart is trying to get going. Another electrical component stock, and you can see right at resistance around 350. Pure Energy Minerals, this chart is up here around 130 and trying to get going. Um, and I, you know, it's involved in, in batteries and that kind of stuff. Treasure, uh, I don't know why this one is in this <laughs> chart list. Um, it's an insurance group. Maybe it was for um, insurance into the renewable energy. I, I'm trying to remember why I might have put it in here. Arcona Corporation, uh, this one looks like it's a buyout, so we can just delete this chart. And Oracobra, um, again, a mineral supplier, and this chart's trying to break through $15. $15. Um, GTLS, this chart uh, was a big performer in 2021. Then 2022, it actually made new highs at the end of 22 when the whole world was frustrated. Charts come down and now it's just moving back above its 40 week moving average. So that's an interesting one. Starting to get going here, scooter ranking back up above 75. And you can see it stayed up there for a long period of time. So nothing wrong with that chart. Next Gen Energy trying to get going as well here. Scooter ranking moving up above 75. Again, we started all our calculations based on the RSI, not the scooter ranking this time. Um, Centris Energy, this one's still big kind of downtrend, but you get the idea. Here's a 75%. It's just turning up now. The PPO has given us a positive cross. Uranium Energy. Charts in a big, long downtrend here. Want to see it get back above the moving averages. And again, the uh, scooter ranking is moving up near 75. So if it could get going, that would be helpful.
Albemarle, a lithium supplier stuck under the 40-week moving average, would like to see that get going. Uranium, uranium's had a big move. The actual spot price of uranium has been breaking out. Um, Want to keep watching the material stocks and see if they can get going, but chemical has been doing a pretty good breakout so far. Um, CCJ is the ticker. It might be in this list. Anyway, as you look through these charts, you can see I've pulled them from all over, but the idea is now you're looking at a theme and you could do the same theme. We have one set up for artificial uh, intelligence, AI. Um, we have some set up for genomics. We have some set up for, you know, uh, whatever, not not uh, interrelated themes, but clean themes like just one uh, area of the market or one industry group. So maybe transports or gold. Um, but this is one where we've actually gone after a wider theme and then tried to move all these companies within it. So this Excelsior Mining is trying to bounce up here, up 20% this week. It's a penny stock, so let's not get too focused on it. Yeah, here's Cameco. This is the Canadian listing. $40 was its prior high. It's up to $43.40 here, just trying to break out of a big two-year base. Um, Gerdau, um, just working its way up. And you can see a lot of these charts are starting to build... Uh, pressure on the right hand side to turn up this nuclear this is the nuclear power companies not nuclear miners or uranium miners breaking above this 59 level and and moving up so you're going to get uh, nuclear power plants and that kind of thing panasonic this chart's been on a real run lately was nine bucks in april now 12 so that looks pretty good um live corp this one's trying to break through Real rough, you know, six, this is $36, but there was a lot of pressure in around this twenty-seven fifty to 30 Any sort of breakout here in that chart probably gets through this whole three-year uh, resistance layer. Ivanhoe Mines, same idea, two-year resistance layer trying to pop to the upside. Freeport McMoran just recently turned up above both moving averages and wants to get going. Uh, this is an ETF to buy copper directly, and we can draw a trend line across the top here. And as it's starting to break out uh, through here, this could be pretty bullish, and that's what we're watching for. I'd like to see the PPO turn up right around zero here. We we do have this one risk, and it's I'll outline it as a risk rather than outline it as a problem. Um, and the idea being when you get your ppo kind of rising up pull back comes down around the zero line and restarts that's a very bullish place on the chart what we can see looking over here on the left it did that kind of late 2021 ran up and then fell down so what we want to make sure here is that this chart actually does get going and we don't want to see it roll down here with a PPO around zero. That's a problematic area where basically you've just lost so much momentum, the chart goes negative. And we saw a lot of charts do that in 2022. So what we want to see now out of these charts, again, if, if we're going to expand the bull market, what we should see is industrials and materials, um, all of these uh, electrical component stocks, that kind of thing, should all start to break out and turn to the high side. And so if that's going to happen, and that's what it appears it's trying to do right now, and if they can get going, this is a pretty popular place on the chart to get long. Um, here's uh, Shamur Chemicals um, trying to get going. Again, another downtrend here that hasn't been broken. Scooter ranking up around 75 the stock doesn't really get firmly up there, or it hasn't for a few years. It did back in 2020, but we'd really like to see this start to go on a run. Allegheny Big Steel Company, again, just holding this uptrend line could probably draw it all the way out to the end, trying to turn back up here and get going. BHP had a big jump last week, uh, broke the downtrend and kind of, you know, did exactly what we were hoping for, bounce off the zero line. And we'd like to now just watch this continue to work its way higher. Um, what we don't want to see is the 64 level, 69 level become a 64 level and build a right shoulder. That would be more problematic. Chase Corporation of Commodity Chemicals Company, really um, a nice push here, moving roughly five bucks a week, just gently working its way up on the right-hand side. Sensata Technologies, real choppy. 
Lundin Mining, I'm trying to get through the prior highs of this year. Just really, it hasn't gone very far since mid-April, um, just chopping sideways. Ocean Power Technologies, I don't think we want to invest in that yet, down under a dollar. Gibraltar Steel, trying to break this you know, meaningful drop from 103 to 30 five call it and now we're at 60 can it get going and really start to break through 2023 resistance polar power the chart's ugly down in the bottom right um, this is the actual price of copper again um, tilting down here trying to turn up around that zero level clean spark these companies are getting really interesting here um, for uh, charging stations uh, what I'm pretty sure that's what this one is. And what we'd like to see, obviously, is it starts to get going. But a lot of people are adopting the Tesla charging station setup uh, for GM. And I think I heard one other company was starting to work on that as well. Anyway, getting through $5 here is pretty much confirming the turn. And PPO finally going above zero. So if this chart was to start running, this would be nice to see. Constellium, I think, is a, an aluminum company, and you're right around that $17 level. Again, we want to just watch all these charts finally get through these resistance layers, and lots of them are sitting there. Air products, big downtrend. Uh, Lindy, one of their competitors, um, actually started to break out the other day. So um, if this chart's about to follow along, PPO bouncing right around zero would be a nice place to take a look at it. Um, steel ETF trying to turn up above the two moving averages. I don't like this so far. Where you see a strong scooter ranking, you see it pull down, comes back up and tries. And we want to make sure it gets back up into the top zone here. We don't want it to roll down like it did in here. So this is a bit of a, uh, again, one of those places on the chart we have to be very, very careful of. And we just see the momentum indicator near zero trying to turn up. As long as it's successful, great. If it starts to roll down, big problem. Um, so Bloom Energy, again, downtrending, nothing great here. So the RSIs are starting to get less as we work down this list. We're at the 39th stock here. And we're starting to see some of these haven't really started to move. So here's US Steel, um, full stochastic starting to turn up. Here we are with the PPO trying to cross. So there's a lot of right things going on, but uh, so far they haven't all broken out. New core steel, uh, nano one materials, again, just sideways so far. I want to see something start to turn. Uh, first quantum minerals had big problems down in Panama, trying to get through this 60, 30, sorry, $36 level. And getting through that is going to give you new 52 week highs and get you probably on your way. But the stock's really been range bound for three years now. Uh, Quantum Scape, this one, a big heady IPO came out at $10, call it, went to 132, sits back here at about seven. Um, whew, wild move. But anyway, the bottom line is it's trying to build a base down here between five and $10. Century Aluminum trying to break out. Again, want to see all of these stocks start to do that uh, relatively soon here. If we're going to continue the rotation, and maybe I should just show that. Um, so when you're looking at, at the stock market, one of the things we talk about a lot um, at Osprey Strategic is the rotation. So what you're looking for is what are the strongest um, stocks? And I'm just going to go for the last three months. So um, what you see here is discretionary communication services, technology, and really um, industrials is the fourth. So Everything on the left side is growth and everything on the right side typically is more defensive. What we see down here is this is the sector rotation model. And we see the stock market lead and then uh, lead to the upside and lead to the downside, the real economy. So as the, the market starts to price in the full recession, the stock market is taking off. Well, what we're seeing here is these three or four sectors are starting to lead, which is what we would expect in a new bull market. So that's what makes us think we are in the bull market. Here's the concern. We want to make sure that these industrials, materials, and energy start to become part of the program. And, and again, we want them to be part of the big rise up here in the overall economy. So that's uh, one of the tricks that we're looking for. So when we see all of these charts um, trying to turn up here on the right hand side, that's what we're expecting is this next wave of investment to start. And if that doesn't, that's probably going to be a bigger problem. So um, 
hopefully I've shown you an idea of the way to take a, a chart list with a mix of stocks and indicators and, um, you know, things that don't have scooter rankings, how to go grab a different indicator to rank them by and then start to look at the strongest ones first. What we want to see out of this list is in general, we want it to start percolating up. And, and most of these charts, as we get on this electrical theme, um, should should do well in the next bull market. Um, I think the bigger, you know, again, the bigger question for me is uh, moving all of these cars to electric and then saying, you know, we don't have enough power on the grid, so please don't plug in your car. Um, anyway, that's another whole debate. Right now, it looks like these charts are trying to turn, and the real question is, can they follow through? With that, keep in mind the the headiness of some of these FANG names, especially Microsoft and and NVIDIA, AMD. The PPOs are at very, very high levels, and that was probably one of the best clues that things were getting a little bit frothy um, back at the end of 2021. And here we are again sitting up at those frothy levels. So with that, uh, thanks everybody. Thank you for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. You can see the recordings now on Stock Charts TV YouTube page, and you can also find them on ospreystrategic.org under free stuff market buzz. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.